So I have two things to rant about on this iPhone. I really am not happy with it. Alright, so weather aside, I have just landed in Italy. Um, it is 1 p.m. now. My battery life is sitting at about 53% on the iPhone 16 Pro and I will keep you guys updated with both screen time reports and how that battery is doing. I did have to wake up at literally like half past five this morning, so it's a pretty long day and obviously I've already started using the cameras. I've got like three missions today. I want to have an absolutely banging carbonara for lunch. I want to find a hopefully very good Italian pizza and I want to basically shoot a whole bunch of photos uh, on the iPhone 16 Pro and a lot of video as well. So you guys are seeing all the time that the phone is not in the shot is gonna be footage shot on the iPhone 16 Pro and I will label that footage, of course. All right, so I can tick one of the things off the list. That was a bloody delicious carbonara. I have to admit though, the screen on time and battery life on the iPhone right now is actually not impressing me too much. I don't know whether, because it's quite hot here, I don't know whether the heat is actually almost like accelerating the drain. I don't know if anyone actually knows whether that's a thing. I did a little bit of research. It doesn't seem like it's completely tangible, but it is fairly hot weather. And obviously I was in the sun eating, uh, eating lunch. But right now, we're all about to hit 20% and it's only uh, 2.30 p.m. So, but we'll have to see how it does for the rest of the day. And then eventually, obviously I'm gonna have to plug it in, uh, but I'll keep you guys posted about that. We are about to be, as you can see, this is the leaning Tower of Pisa. Let's whack on the uh, 5X telephoto there. So you've got the Duomo on the right and then the tower there. Figure we may as well get some of the tourist stuff out of the way before you know, maybe going to some slightly quieter areas a little bit later on. We really are in tourist central right now. That is the tower behind me, as you guys can see. So I'll throw up a few photos here. The first photo is shot on the iPhone 16 Pro. These are all edited Pro Raw shots. Uh, this is how I tend to shoot my photos. I'm actually going to do a video on the best photo settings. Um, in my experience, I, I have a lot of experience shooting iPhone photos. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely leave this video a like uh, and obviously like a comment uh, as to any questions you have regarding my iPhone settings. With the iPhone 16 Pro now, we're getting quite dramatically improved audio in video, which is actually a pretty cool experience. And obviously you've got the new effects, the new um, audio mixing features, which allow you to really play around with the type of audio that you're able to get from the phone. So for instance, like right now, there's wind noise, there's obviously, you know, tourist kind of noise in the background. And I'm probably able to clean that up quite dramatically. I'll show you in post how I'm able to do that. And the next thing, because of the camera control, something I am actually really uh, enjoying, and it's not something which I was necessarily anticipating, is the fact that I can now change the action button to open the Blackmagic camera app, which is obviously massively beneficial because that's where I shoot all of the, the video that I'm aiming to get uh, Apple log on. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So I do have quite a lot of thoughts, obviously, about the iPhone 16 now. Like I've been shooting for it for, you know, roughly half a day now and there are definitely a few really key changes something which i've been a bit underwhelmed with is the camera control button that may well change this isn't my full photographer's review of the camera i will do that and i will talk about it right now i feel like it's a bit gimmicky i have to admit like i think that it is uh, going to be one of those things which some people use or maybe just find one way of using it maybe just to open up the camera right now that it doesn't really isn't slotting into my workflow the thing which is underrated is the photographic styles so right now you are actually able to dramatically change the look and feel of the iphone camera system and that is really beneficial like you're able to actually change the way the iphone processes all its jpegs and that is underrated i'll post the the styles that I'm using right now uh, in some of these shots, you can kind of see what I'm up to and how I'm using the camera systems. But this is a genuinely pretty killer feature. And I think for some people, it's gonna be enough uh, to actually want to upgrade 
just on that feature alone. So the really cool thing about the photographic style update, and like I said, I will kind of label on screen here what uh, my photographic style settings are, so you can copy them if you're interested. The cool thing about this basically is it allows you to actually change the characteristics of the camera itself. So it essentially allows you to control things like contrast, shadow control, that type of thing on all of the photos that you take on your phone, which is obviously a massive change. And it's one of the reasons that I actually shoot with ProRaw on this camera. So this has mitigated some of the reason to be able to do that, which is really, really cool. The only significant difference now is that ProRaw still allows you sharpness control, which these photos in the standard HEIC mode are still over sharpened. So after this, I went into the cathedral here, uh, directly next to the Tower of Pisa. There's a really beautiful cathedral. So here are some of the shots. Um, from this. It's kind of a useful lower light environment. Um, the, I have to admit, the low light on the main 1X lens, we will talk about low light properly um, just a little bit later, but the main kind of low light photos on the main 1X lens are really good. Like the increase in the sensor size is definitely noticeable, which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty hard to get the main 1X lens to actually kick into night mode, which is cool. Like I said, we'll, we'll show you some proper low light environments later. Um, the sad news here is that the lens ghosting is still just horrendous on this phone um, and again this is a clip taken from the low light test but it's obviously relevant here uh, just look how bad this this ghosting is um, you know it just basically ruins low light videos uh, and and photos as well uh, which is just a real shame that they continue to just have this issue uh, I, I don't really know why nobody can figure out how to fix this it's surely you know it doesn't happen dramatically on cameras so uh, I don't know just annoying just a round out this battery chat because you can see this screenshot here right so this was at 10 percent charge and right now i'm at four percent charge and i was just 10 minutes ago and i've been using the phone sure but like you know i sent some emails and then i took some videos my iphone 15 pro's battery life was so bad towards the end of its life the, well, I mean, at the end of its life, it was one year. It definitely seems better, but on a pretty intensive day of usage like today, unfortunately, the iPhone just continues to still be mid when it comes to battery. So obviously with me being completely out of battery on my phone, what came in absolutely clutch is Ugreen's new Nexo power bank chargers which luckily are the sponsor of this video. So this has actually worked out really well because they've been an absolute lifesaver for me on this trip. I have with me on this trip, the 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. Uh, I also have the 12,000 milliamp hour power bank. Yeah, so these things absolutely not to be underrated. This has gone down 13%. It was at 80% and the iPhone is on 77% charge right now. That is pretty insane. <laughs> Just an absolute essential, literally is so tiny, fits right in to your backpack. The 20,000 gives a maximum output of 130 watts and the 12,000 gives you 100 watts. So they're both really powerful chargers. Uh, they can, if your device is fast charge compatible, they can really, really fast charge your device, which is pretty sick. So since USB-C is one of the best inventors of all time, I'm out shooting a few photos with the Fuji X106 um, and the camera's out of battery, but it's literally no problem. Since the Ugreen charger uh, just connects via USB-C and I'm able to charge even my camera batteries on the go. And what's particularly cool is it has enough power to actually charge these devices simultaneously. So I can charge a camera, a phone, or even a laptop just with the one single charger. So after a spot more rain, sadly, uh, but it did clear up and it actually ended up, right, with just a beautiful sunset. As you can see, I had a rainbow over the, the river that runs through Pisa um, and it made for some actually amazing photos and videos this is apple log um, and as you can see like i'm correcting or i'm using a color correction on top to basically bring this back to a really beautiful picture this is how i choose to shoot um almost all of the video that's like not just like kind of fast turnaround for instance for this video i've done a lot of the kind of standard camera app to take advantage of the stabilization being as best as it possibly can be and that type of thing but for the most part i do tend to shoot in log if i'm going to use these in videos because 
because it just just replicates such a high-end video you're able to really kind of get the most out of these cameras in my opinion so here are some of the shots from that um again these are all pro raw shots so these uh, these aren't here these have been edited um but to be honest i don't do that much like i already mentioned um apart from really pulling down the sharpness in most of these images you obviously can get creative with filters and things like that it's something i'm doing less and less on my iphone shots i have to admit because the the phone's exposed and uh, color in a really nice way now and at the end of the day they are a phone shot you know i'm not trying to make it look like it's from my fuji i did manage to find my pizza even though sadly i messed up my order and there's no tomato base on this one it was a white pizza so i was a bit sad but we headed out just to kind of wrap off the day with some low light photos uh, some low light photos and videos here i think it seems to me right now that uh, obviously with initial testing at least that the main 1x lens has been dramatically proved in low light like uh, some of these images that i was actually able to get really really impressed me like this one here i know that obviously the main subject is lit this is a pro raw shot and this is just absolutely gorgeous in my opinion like the colors considering this is a low light photograph absolutely fantastic the softness is just absolutely spot on i do think the other lenses are unaffected and just not amazing in low light but it is what it is i think a lots of cameras really struggle with uh, ultra wide performance and um the telephoto performance in low light definitely the apple telephoto is not incredible but like it's absolutely fine um but yeah i want to give you guys an example of the different sensor sizes and how they respond in low light you can see that obviously this is flipping back and forward here between low light so as soon as i switch to one of those other lenses it goes into night mode straight away whereas if i go back to the main rear facing lens it just pretty much always sits on the main 1x like i can't get it to switch into a low light mode mode um and obviously, obviously unless you do it manually so it is just showing the level of exposure available in that main rear facing camera is a lot more than it used to be so here were the final screen on time reports uh, and battery life for the day so i pretty much went through two full charges on this day which genuinely is pretty crazy considering this is a new brand new device you can see that i charged it up to roughly about 80 percent ish and then it was down to uh, 18 percent at 8 p.m and then like completely dead by the time i obviously got back to my hotel room and just to kind of round this off i've got one little quick message so second day i'm about to head for the airport right now my phone is on 11 percent and i charged it to 96 percent last night i woke up about 8 30 and it basically was at you know 90 percent ish this morning when i woke up how is it 1 p.m and the phone's almost dead. I've also been taking photos on my Fuji today as well as the iPhone. So that, seriously mid, like seriously mid.